How bad are things? Uh, well, uh, you, you should have asked me that uh, a few weeks ago before the protest started. Uh, but no, no, there's no question. There's uh, a lot of pressure on business and uh, and even our domestic hospitality. You know, uh, we've seen uh, the protests uh, uh, drag down sales of dine-in restaurants as well as uh, keeping people from moving around the city. So uh, there, there has been an impact on that. And of course, uh, until they resolve it, it's going to continue to impact. Okay, but you know, I don't want to get to outside Thailand just yet, but we will come to that. But have, how have the protests compounded the problems that you've had? And do you see a, a political solution on the table which would work, in your opinion? Uh, I don't know that there's a political situation on the table yet, but I believe there's a lot of work going on with it. Uh, there's no question that uh, it's well understood by the government that this uh, that political instability doesn't help us with our foreign direct investments, and it's certainly not helping the domestic economy, which has already been battered by COVID. You know, the fact that we still maintain a very strict lockdown procedure and only people that are prepared to quarantine for 14 days are allowed into Thailand. We're hopeful that this is going to change next uh, next month as we see tremendous pressure on the government to improve the economic situation. Uh, they can recognize that uh, they've been successful in the fight against COVID, but have been totally unsuccessful in, in trying to revitalize the economy. Bill, you talked about how it's been so challenging for your businesses. Give us a sense. What are the numbers that you're looking at? How, how is profitability being impacted? I mean, you reported a loss for the last quarter. And we'll report a loss in the third quarter, I'm sure. Uh, we expect to see a break-even cash flow probably in the fourth quarter, and we expect to see uh, improving profits all through uh, next year. You know, what we're seeing now is that most countries recognize they can't have a total lockdown like Thailand has and keep everyone out. So we see Europe and Australia everything gradually opening up. And, uh, and in the case of China, where uh, they have a huge domestic economy, we've seen absolutely no uh, decline. Matter of fact, we're now above uh, pre-COVID levels, both in our food and our hotel operations in China. You talked about how businesses are putting pressure on the government to open up the borders, uh, which has been hurting uh, businesses in, in, in Thailand. How confident are you that once the borders are open, the virus will remain contained? I think that uh, we have uh, really done a, a very good job uh, of containing the virus. And I think as long as they open up with great care, and I understand that the first focus will be on those low-risk countries, uh, and I'm uh, fully in favor of that, and that would include China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, uh, Japan, Singapore, uh, which would be considered low-risk. I don't think anyone's advocating uh, opening up the borders to high-risk countries unless they would quarantine for the full 14 days. But, uh, but certainly I see the economy opening up, uh, and I think we are hoping for some good news in November. You've cut thousands of jobs, Bill, and there are plans to cut more. How much more? What are you looking at? Well, we, we cut in the hotel side. I think until we see the quarantine uh, either eliminated or reduced, we're going to still be under pressure on the hotel side here in Thailand. But generally, uh, the rest of the world has uh, been opening up very strongly. Uh, Australia, we've been hiring people back. Uh, and in uh, certain parts of uh, Europe, we've had to bring people back. Uh, so I think that the, the worst is behind us, for sure. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, combating the virus here in Thailand, as an example, will mean that we will, you know, be prepared, I think, to shut down different areas, whether it be uh, a Padio or a Samui or a, uh, a Bangkok, if the virus uh, rears its head again. But I'm pretty hopeful that uh, based on the, the advances that have been made in testing and the fact that we've been operating quarantine hotels, and as a matter of fact, have handled thousands of people already in that quarantine, and yet our case, uh, after the second COVID test, we have uh, uh, zero cases. And after the first COVID test, uh, we've had only uh, less than 1%. So we see with good testing uh, that this is going to be manageable and with good tracking. And I think the government is uh, on top of all of that and uh, will make action and make something happen this month, this coming month. Bill, you know, with the, an unprecedented, and that's probably the most uh, overused word uh, at the moment, uh, <laughs> this unprecedented environment, what have you learned, though, about running your business and how is your business evolving as a consequence when things do normalise? Well, I think one of the first things that we had to do is we really uh, uh, cut costs very, very dramatically throughout the, uh, the hotel group. 
the hotel group, uh, you know, where the break-even may have been at, uh, say, 50 percent uh, hotel occupancy previously, I think when we see the, the market recover, and that's one of the things I'm very optimistic on, we'll see a break-even point probably closer to 30 percent uh, within our hotels. Many of the hotels have already reached break-even in Thailand only from domestic business. But as soon as we can open up the, uh, the channel for foreign business, we're going to see a lot further improvement on that. Our food business, on the other hand, has been uh, very strong, and we have brought back uh, more than 20 percent of our workforce. Uh, and while dine-in is still slow, compounded by both the virus as well as the uh, 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 protests, we have seen uh, delivery. Uh, now the numbers I saw were, were plus uh, 15 percent in the first three quarters over last year, pre-COVID. Uh, dine-in is still down as a result of COVID and uh, uh, the uh, uh, protests, but but even that we see improving dramatically. So from a food perspective, we expect a very strong profitable year in uh, 2021, uh, and we expect to still close the year with profits at the food group uh, for 2020. Bill, uh, a lot of the airlines have been saying that things are not going to get back to normal for a couple of years at least, and we can really not see 2019 uh, levels of traffic for ages. Of course, that has an impact, tells you something about air travel and how it feeds into your hotel business there. So uh, what kind of forecasts are you making looking ahead? Well, you know, I think that uh, the uh, there is a... Uh, uh, an opening up that we see from just getting some of the travel happening. You know, there's no question we're not going to get back to 2019 levels in 2021, but I don't think we need to get back to that. If Thailand can open up to China, we'll already see a huge uh, uh, impact on, on the whole tourism and economy uh, without having to risk a great deal because Thai, uh, China today is, is probably one of our low risk uh, neighbors. Uh, Bill, you gave up your U.S. citizenship a long time ago. You're now a Thai citizen. How closely are you watching the U.S. election and linked to that? If Biden becomes the next president, do you expect Asian, Asian businesses to benefit in any way? I think, uh, you know, Biden will bring in a uh, probably a different perspective if uh, if he's elected. And I think you could expect probably uh, perhaps an attempt to have closer relationships with some of the Asian trading partners. So I think on the overall, I, I feel that Asia will come out of it, whether Trump's president or Biden, better than uh, most other areas. Bill, before we let you go, just one final question. I mean, we've seen a lot of protests uh, demanding uh, reform uh, for the monarchy. We know that the Thai royal family has a 3 percent stake in Minor International. Do you envision that that could be a backlash because of that? I don't think so. I, my view is that this has been a stake that's been held for more than 40 years and uh, as part of the overall investment that relates back to King Rama the Ninth. So, uh, no, I don't uh, anticipate anything on that. Uh, there's a, the, the, the uh, monarchy holds a stake in many companies in Thailand. It's been a tradition.